on your face. You big okay, perfect song for this next interview we're so excited about. We will rock you. Are you ready to rock and read? Rock and roll always, right? But we're reading and we're looking at great photos and you can learn so much about some of Cleveland's best rock venues in this book. Local author, friend of the show, Deanna Adams, here to share some stories, some photos, much more in her latest book, third book for you yes, about exactly. rock and roll. Yes. Yeah, with the yes. photos. I love it. Uh, Cleveland's rock and roll venues, and this was something that was supposed to happen about a year ago it actually, for you. It came out in March 2020, yeah. just when all the venues shut down. Oh. And I wanted to celebrate, I didn't want just a book launching, I wanted to celebrate uh, the, the clubs, the musicians mm -hmm. uh, that played there, like yourself, Ace Muller, great band. Um, and we had to you know, shut it down. And then August, we rescheduled at the Beachland. Right. Shut it down again. Wow. So we're trying again, you know, because I just want to, to celebrate um, the Cleveland history as far as the venues go right. and the musicians. And we're going to have uh, a couple DJs there. We're going to have a really good time. It's really You've done such a good job of covering Cleveland and the whole scene. And, you, and the DJs and everyone that's really contributed to making Cleveland the rock and roll Hall of Fame, the rock and roll capital of the world. Talk about how these venues, these places, and some of them are big, some of them are tiny. How did they make the landscape of what Cleveland is, that international and national acts felt like they could not make it right. until they played these places in Cleveland, Ohio? Why is that? Well, it was the marriage. It was the, the radio, but also the club owners got together and promoted both of, and not only supported the local bands, but the national, the international. We all know the Agora. Hank Lacani right. was mm -hmm. an amazing yes. supporter. And I, I just love one thing he said. He always had the, the, uh, the record industry people sit way in the back and have the fans right up front. So it always sparked the energy. And that's what's being going to a venue. That, there's nothing like live music. My bands yeah. played at both the Agoras and and yes. for years in high school and college, and I, it, the rush was, there was nothing yes. quite like playing it at one of his event, venues at, at, at the Agora. Incredible. And what's great about Cleveland is that even back in the 60s, there was something to do every night. For you sure. Know, it was a club to go to. <laughs> uh, when I worked with Janet uh, McCaska, uh, she was on the show a couple uh, about a month ago, on, on the photos, and we were talking about, you know, how, you know, you went, sometimes you went to venues mm -hmm. at, at a night because there was so much happening, and we had our favorite local bands that we had to see, and we would cross the bridge to go from the <laughs> east to the west right. side just to see them, you know. When you talk about the venues, we, were, we did the story on, and as we're looking at some of the, some of the great photos here from some of the uh, venues, Michael, Michael Stanley, of oh my goodness. You know, we talk about guys like Michael, Michael who mm -hmm. passed, Charlie Watts, you know, and you talk about those concerts that you saw, not only at places like the Richfield Coliseum, but you know at Euclid Tavern, mm -hmm. you know local places like that, and it's not just the the show you remember. It's being in that environment, being in that place, and some mm -hmm. looking at the walls and and the iconic places that you were. So it's really a, it is about the venue, right? And mm -hmm. it's a it's a part of you. You're a part of it all. So mm -hmm. it's very different than watching it on TV. Just being a part of that energy, and you know my first concert. Speaking of Charlie Watts, was the Rolling Stones at the. Um, I'm dating myself, yep. but. Akron Rubber Bowl. Oh, oh was my it really? In 1972. Wow. And, and I was young, but I was right up front, and it was, you know, and you don't forget that. It's yeah. like, it's not just the music that's the song, soundtrack of our lives, but it's the venues when we, what band we went to mm -hmm. see, and what, you know, really stood out, and the memories that we make and are continuing to make. Where it was, and the, the pictures, you mentioned uh, Janet McCoska, we love her so much. But a lot of the pictures, too, are from people's personal collections yes. of just, so it's so intimate that maybe photos that, probably never seen before. Right, exactly, because they were there at the right time, mm -hmm. and now the cameras are much better. Sure. Uh, you know, thank God <laughs> yeah. Janet was around in the 70s because our cameras were terrible back then. Yeah, so, right? But well, I, we saw a minute ago at the Odeon, my band used to play there too, yeah. but Jane Scott, and I mean, she wrote for over 50 years for The Plain Dealer when she talked about a band or a club, it was something, and they were somebody, and they did a really special birthday party for her. At the Odeon, and mm -hmm. there's a picture of that in my book. Um, I always got it on her Jane. She Jane was, was the best, uh, right? Yeah, I admire her going to rock concerts in her 80s. I know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, she was rocking till wow. she was, what, 92 yeah. years old or something like that. God bless her heart. I, I'm I pushing for that. I love that we're back in the clubs now. The bands are playing. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of local artists in here. I saw Colin DeSalt and Billy Morris, yeah. you know, and Norm, Brothers Tich Lounge. Norm Tischler, you know, yeah. the Crazy yeah. Marvin, the guys who are still trying to get out there.
there and play. So this is a great book, and it's a celebration of rock history. I want to tell you about this. Uh, Deanna's going to be there along with Ray Carr mm -hmm. coming yes. up on Sunday. And Ray Carr is, has a great morning um, radio show on WCSB on Tuesday morning. So, uh, and so it'll be fun to be with him because he knows so much. And, uh, we're gonna and it'll be at the it iconic together. Beachland Ballroom, which is yes. featured a lot in the book as well. So do you buy tickets or do you just show up? Uh, you can buy tickets at $10 at the door, twelve. Uh, I mean $10 ahead, $12 at the door. All the proceeds go to Cindy Barber and the Beachland and her nonprofit, Cleveland Rocks, yeah. Past, Present, Future, um, because we need to support our venues. Yes, so please I, I hope everyone, you know, uh, comes in. We're going to film it for, you know. Oh, yeah, good. just uh, save it, yes. Oh, that's we're, leaving, we're losing so many people now. It's really important to have, you know, the documentation, either in print mm -hmm. or film. And you've done that because the fabric of our clubs here in Cleveland, nothing quite like it, no other city. That's Thank right. you. This is, it's a beautiful book. It really it's is, a yeah. great treasure. So a this is a wonderful gift for anyone. People can buy your book on Sunday too, right? Oh, oh yes. By the way, I'm having a book launching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm having signing and books. And everything. Okay. I'm so excited to have all these people together and talk about their, uh, their history. I forget that. Yeah, I'm going to have books. So. Awesome. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Sure, you can get it on Amazon, too. Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you, Deanna.